We all want more testosterone, unless you're female, but even then, optimizing your hormones is never a bad idea. But there is a dilemma here. As men age, their testosterone levels naturally decline, typically beginning in your 30s and decreasing about 1-2% to per year, assuming you maintain pretty decent habits. And if you don't, it's possible it can nosedive even more than that, which is something that you don't want. This gradual reduction can lead to various symptoms, including decreased muscle mass, increased body fat, reduced energy levels, mood changes, and a lower libido. And while there are medical interventions available for those with clinically low testosterone, this guide focuses on optimizing natural methods to further increase your testosterone levels. And if you don't know me, my name is Dr. Christian Poulos. I am a medical doctor who rejected traditional medicine in favor of a lifestyle medicine and health and fitness coaching business. And my goal here is to get you jacked and healthy. So let's dive into the actionable steps. So first is resistance training. You just gotta give your body a reason to have testosterone. Engaging in regular resistance training is honestly probably one of the most effective methods to actually boost your testosterone levels. This form of exercise, which includes some weightlifting and some cardio, has both acute and chronic effects on testosterone production. So as for the acute effects, so immediately following an, a resistance training session, particularly one involving heavy compound movements like squats, deadlifts, bench press, there is a significant spike in testosterone levels. I'll be honest, this acute increase is pretty temporary, lasts only a few hours, but it can contribute to the overall anabolic environment of your body. The saying that squats and deadlifts increase testosterone actually might be a little bit true. Now let's talk about the chronic effects. So more importantly, consistent resistance training over time can lead to chronically elevated testosterone levels. There was a study published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology and found that men who engaged in regular resistance training for 12 weeks experienced both a significant increase in both total and free testosterone levels. Sounds like a good reason to get in the gym to me. So to maximize the testosterone boosting benefits of resistance training, you gotta find a pretty balanced approach, which is something that I always preach. So I think you should aim for around three to four lifting sessions per week. Last around 45 to 60 minutes. I feel like 50, 60 minutes is kind of the point where you're dragging and you wanna just get out of there. I think this is a pretty good baseline to build some muscle and bone density and of course stimulate testosterone production. You gotta include some compound movements in there. They're gonna engage multiple large muscle groups. You know, refer to the study above that I mentioned earlier. I think incorporating some heavy lifting, you know, three to six rep range and moderate rep ranges like the eight to 15 range will also be your best bet as well. We'll talk about rest a little bit more later, but allow adequate rest between sessions to prevent overtraining, which can also nosedive your testosterone which is not what you want if you're watching this video. So in short, lift weights, bro. Simple as that. Numero dos, maintain a healthy body composition. There is a fat and testosterone connection. So body composition actually plays a crucial role in testosterone production. So excess body fat, particularly visceral fat around the abdomen and the organs in here, can significantly impact testosterone levels through a few different mechanisms. So I encourage people to start a bulk or muscle gaining phase from a lower body fat, usually around eight to 15% for this reason. It's just a much better environment in your body to pack on mass. So adipose tissue, which is fat, contains high levels of an enzyme called aromatase, which converts testosterone into estradiol, which is a form of estrogen. As body fat increases, so does aromatase activity, leading to lower testosterone levels and higher estrogen levels in men. And this is actually a reason why guys with higher body fat can feel symptoms of higher estrogen, like mood swings or a loss of libido which is not a fun place to be. The reasons to stay lean continue, my friend. So obesity is associated with insulin resistance, which can disrupt the normal production of testosterone in the testes. Insulin resistance can also lead to increased production of sex hormone binding globulin or SHBG, which is a hormone that binds testosterone and reduces its bioavailability in your bloodstream. Research suggests that maintaining a body fat percentage between eight to 15% is optimal for testosterone production. However, it's also important to note that extremely low body fat levels like below 6%, bodybuilding stage lean, for example, can also negatively impact your testosterone. So you gotta have some fat necessary for hormone production. If you've been following me at all for a while, this will be very redundant on how to achieve your ideal body fat composition. Combine resistance training with cardiovascular exercise for effective fat loss. Focus on a balanced diet, rich in whole foods, lean proteins, complex carbohydrates, and healthy fats to be in that calorie deficit. Practice some portion control. Don't eat so much. Basically, monitor your calorie intake to achieve and maintain your healthy body weight here. It's simple, but it's not necessarily easy.
Number three, prioritize sleep. So sleep is a critical yet often overlooked factor in testosterone production. During sleep, particularly during the rapid eye movement stage or REM, the body produces a significant amount of its daily testosterone. And this is actually a reason why testosterone levels are usually much higher in the morning when you first wake up. And that's when people say that you should test. So let's talk a little bit about sleep deprivation here. Honestly, I'm a miserable person if I don't sleep more than like six and a half hours. So that's enough motivation for me, let alone the effects on testosterone. So multiple studies have demonstrated the profound effect of sleep on testosterone. Testosterone levels. One notable study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that men who only sleep for five hours per night for one week had 10 to 15% lower testosterone levels compared to when they got the full eight hours of sleep. I actually had a friend who tested his testosterone in the morning after several nights of terrible sleep. The result was in the high 200s and the normal range for testosterone is around 250 to 1000 nanograms per deciliter. His doctor scheduled another test a week later and without changing anything besides the sleep, he was back up to around 550 nanograms per deciliter. Sleep is powerful, simple enough. And while sleep quantity is important, sleep quality also plays a crucial role. Factors like sleep apnea, which can disrupt your normal sleep patterns, can also significantly impact your testosterone production, even if you're getting the full eight hours. So to optimize sleep for testosterone production, aim to get seven to nine hours of sleep per night pretty consistently. One life hack is just to establish a regular sleep schedule, going to bed and waking up roughly at the same times each day. The body is a machine and likes consistency. So I think when you shift your perspective toward thinking of the body like a machine, you're gonna be much more successful basically in everything. Create a sleep conducive environment. Dark, quiet, and cool is a good rule of thumb. I try to black out my room, you know, sometimes use an eye mask and an earplugs, completely remove all sensory stimulation, and also crank my bedroom AC to around 67, 68 degrees. Limit exposure to blue light from electronic devices before bedtime, as this is also gonna affect your body's natural melatonin production, which as you know, helps you go to sleep. If you're still having trouble, you should consider some relaxation techniques like meditation or deep breathing exercises just to improve your sleep quality and relax a little bit. Number four is optimized nutrition. So diet plays a crucial role in hormone production, including testosterone. So while no single food is going to dramatically boost your testosterone levels, I'm talking to you carnivore diet people, an overall balanced diet rich in specific nutrients can support optimal hormone production. So you just gotta have a macronutrient balance here. So for protein, I think adequate protein is obviously essential for production here and also muscle growth. Aim for around 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is around 0.7 to one gram per pound. Carbohydrates also play a role in regulating cortisol levels, which can also impact testosterone. Low carb diets have actually been shown to potentially reduce testosterone levels in some studies, although I would take this with a grain of salt. It's not consistent all across all populations. Now for fats. Healthy fats, particularly monounsaturated and saturated fats, are crucial for testosterone production. Aim for around 20 to 30% of your total calories from fats. I like a mix of eggs, avocado, and olive oil the oil of my people, it is the best. Make sure you get a good quality one because a lot of them are BS and filled with random other oils. And certain micronutrients also play a crucial role in testosterone production. The first one is vitamin D, which is often called the sunshine vitamin. So vitamin D is crucial for production here. And there was actually a study in the Journal of Hormone and Metabolic Research that found that men who take 3,300 IUs of vitamin D daily for a year increase their testosterone levels by 25.2%. So get your vitamin D. Go outside, get some sun, or take a supplement if you are living in a very cloudy or gloomy or winterous country. Winterous, is that even a word? Not for zinc. This mineral is also essential. So a study in the Journal of Nutrition found that zinc supplementation in zinc deficient men nearly doubled their testosterone levels after six months. So if you're not getting enough zinc from your diet, maybe look up some foods and see if you're eating any of those. Could be helpful to supplement with zinc too. Now for magnesium, my favorite, which has also been shown to increase free and total testosterone, particularly in active individuals. So honestly, most Americans are deficient in this one. We're just not getting enough in our diet. So I think supplementing it with it can help your testosterone and also your sleep as well. I typically recommend magnesium glycinate, bisglycinate, or threonate is also a good one too. Vitamin B6 is also involved in the metabolism of steroid hormones. So some foods that support testosterone production overall are eggs, which are rich in protein, healthy fats and micronutrients like vitamin D, fatty fish, which are gonna give you high in omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D. Oysters are another underrated one, one of the best natural sources of zinc. Beef, which contains zinc, vitamin B, saturated fat, and all of which are gonna support testosterone production. You know, just eating these is not going to boost your testosterone, you know, on their own, but I definitely think it could be helpful. Don't forget your leafy greens, which are high in magnesium too, or you could just take supplements, you know, not the best idea, but could be helpful for some people.
Number five, manage your stress. So there is a cortisol testosterone balance here. So chronic stress can have a significant impact on your testosterone levels. When the body is under stress, it produces cortisol, often referred to the body's main stress hormone. Cortisol and testosterone have a bit of an inverse relationship. So as cortisol levels rise, testosterone levels tend to fall. When testosterone levels are lower, everything else in the body is gonna work in slow motion. So fat oxidation and muscle protein synthesis are both gonna be lower as well. So the way this works is that stress activates the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access leading to increased cortisol production. This can interfere with testosterone production in a few ways. So for one, cortisol can directly inhibit testosterone synthesis in the testes. Stress can also reduce the production of gonadotropin releasing hormone or GnRH, which is crucial for stimulating testosterone production as well. Chronic stress can also lead to inflammation, which can further suppress testosterone production because your body's like, oh shoot, we're inflamed. What do we need all this testosterone for? So some strategies for stress management. This is simply just about having some good habits exercise, sleep enough, spend some time in nature, consider prayer, mindfulness, or meditation, and just maintain some strong social relationships. These are all great habits anyway that you should do regardless of this video and regardless of stress and testosterone. So number six, get adequate sunlight. So Dr. Huberman has probably beat this one into your brain, but sunlight exposure, particularly in the morning, can have multiple benefits for testosterone production. So the primary mechanism is through the synthesis of vitamin D, but sunlight also plays a role in regulating circadian rhythms, which can impact hormone production as well. So the way that this works is that when skin is exposed to UVB rays from sunlight, it triggers the production of vitamin D. This fat soluble vitamin is crucial for numerous bodily functions, including testosterone production, which I mentioned earlier. As I mentioned a little bit earlier with that study, men who take a vitamin D supplement when they're deficient are gonna increase their testosterone levels by 25% compared to being deficient, which is what you don't wanna be. Hopefully that made sense. So again, especially if you're in an area without much sunlight or it's winter, I think you should consider a vitamin D supplement. Personally, I don't take a vitamin D supplement in the summer when I'm outside a lot, but as the you know daylight savings, it starts getting dark at 4 p.m., that's when I start throwing it back into my routine. So exposure to sunlight, especially in the morning, I think helps regulate your body's circadian rhythm. You know, the internal clock plays a crucial role in hormone production, including testosterone. So disrupted circadian rhythms often seen in shift workers or those with irregular sleep patterns have also been associated with lower testosterone levels. Like I said earlier, the body likes routine and consistency, so give it the tools to do so. So as for some practical sunlight exposure, aim for around 10 to 15 minutes of direct sunlight within the first few hours of waking up. If you're in a northern latitude or with limited sun exposure, of course, consider the vitamin D supplement as well. But of course, be mindful of skin cancer risks, use appropriate sun protection for extended exposure. I personally like zinc-based sunscreens, which look like you have a bunch of white stuff caked on you. Hopefully that doesn't sound bad on the video, but you know what I mean. Seven, consider specific supplements. So while a balanced diet should be the primary source of nutrients, I think some supplements can support testosterone production, especially if you're deficient to begin with. So mucinopurians or L-DOPA is also known as velvet bean, contains high levels of L-DOPA, which is a precursor to dopamine. Some studies suggest that it may help increase testosterone levels, particularly in men with stress-related infertility. L-DOPA may also help reduce cortisol levels and increase luteinizing hormone or LH, which is the hormone that directly stimulates testosterone production in your testes. Typical dosages for this range from around 200 to 600 milligrams per day of a standardized extract. But do your own research on this one as this can interact with other medications, particularly antidepressants. Now for ZMA, which is zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6. This popular combination of nutrients is very well known in the fitness industry for its potential to support sleep quality and also improve your testosterone production. As I mentioned earlier, zinc is essential for testosterone production and often depleted through intense exercise. Magnesium supports sleep quality and may increase free testosterone levels. And of course, vitamin B6 is involved in the metabolism of steroid hormones. Typical dosages roughly are around 30 milligrams of zinc, 450 milligrams of magnesium, and around 10 milligrams of vitamin B6 before bed. Now for some other supplements that can help. First is ashwagandha, which I love. It's an adaptogenic herb that may help reduce cortisol, which is the main stress hormone we talked about earlier, and increase testosterone levels as a result. There's boron, which is a trace mineral that has shown some promise in increasing free testosterone levels as well. Kind of skeptical on this one, but I think it's worth including in this list anyway. Number eight, this one may surprise you, stay sexually active. So this is the one that you probably didn't expect. Sexual activity and arousal can have both short-term and long-term effects on testosterone levels. While the relationship between sexual activity and testosterone is rather complex, I think maintaining a healthy sex life can contribute to overall hormonal balance. So first, the short-term effects. Studies have shown that sexual arousal and activity can lead to acute increases in testosterone levels. So for example, one study found that men who visited a sex club, which is bizarre, I know, had higher testosterone levels compared to those who didn't, regardless 
of whether or not they participated in any sexual activity. As for the long-term effects, regular sexual activity may help maintain higher baseline testosterone levels. A study published in the Archives of Sexual Behavior found that men who had regular sexual activity or at least once per week, had higher testosterone levels compared to those who were less sexually active. And it's important to note that the relationship between sexual activity and testosterone is bi-directional. So higher testosterone levels can increase libido and sexual function, which can in turn lead to more frequent sexual activity. And the frequent sexual activity can lead to higher testosterone. So it's like a, a, a nice little cycle here. And some considerations, you do not have my blessing to go on plenty of sexual escapades. Quality of sexual experiences may be more important than quantity in terms of hormonal benefits. Emotional factors such as relationship satisfaction can also play a role in how much sexual activity affects hormone levels as well. So for those without a sexual partner, research suggests that some other forms of physical intimacy and touch can have positive effects on hormone levels. So do what you will with that one. So all in all, I think that optimizing testosterone levels naturally requires a multifaceted approach that encompasses various aspects of lifestyle and health. Honestly, I think this really just comes down to have good habits, exercise, eat healthy, go outside, sleep enough, um, have some good relationships, and I think your testosterone will fall right into place. And if you do have lower testosterone levels clinically, could be worth speaking to a doctor, getting on some medications that could boost it, or even testosterone replacement therapy in the right person. Definitely some considerations to be had there, but I just wanna make sure that you exhaust all the natural options first before jumping into the medical side of things. Otherwise, if you still are having trouble building muscle, losing fat, improving your confidence or your health, feel free to apply in the description below for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. If you're interested, you can always dive into that. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching the video. Feel free to comment any other suggestions of videos you'd like to see, and I will catch you in the next one.